I'm talking with Anya Kamenetz. Today, I was very excited by Anya's book, DIYU, which I highly recommend. I'm also very interested in what Anya is doing with P2PU and, and teaching people, helping people learn to be self-learners. So first thing I wanted to ask you about is about the course, but also in general about learning to be a self-learner these days, given the resources that are available. Sure. So the the collaboration with PDPU really grew out of this uh, ebook that I just published called the Edubunks Guide, and the Edubunks Guide is a totally free resource that is designed to be a, a guide book for basically for self learners for people who feel the need to you know make their own personal learning plan or chart their personal learning course and. I didn't find a lot of materials out there for this. I'd, I'd found a lot of references in the literature to things like a personal learning plan, a personal learning network, but not a lot of stuff that was really user-facing in terms of actually describing how to do this stuff. So I kind of made it up. I mean, I talked to people who were doing it and uh, asked them how they did it. And there's a lot of stories from self-learners, uh, call them edgy punks in the book. And when uh, Philip Schmidt from PDPU saw the guide when it came out, he said, you know, We've been looking for something like this on PDPU where people can come in and get started right away without having to join a specific course um, that they can, you know, just get started with their learning. So uh, we started it, you know, we, we opened it up on the course platform, which makes it very easy there at PDPU. Uh, people can join. There, there are members now. People have joined from all around the world, which is really fun. Um, and they're all following through this list of tasks. The first task is to create your personal learning plan with a goal, with a set of tasks, and ideally with a deadline and with people to hold you accountable. And then we go through the steps of, you know, uh, assembling your personal learning network, enriching your personal learning network through, you know, uh, link sharing services and social networks. And then we're going to talk a little bit about acquiring mentors, you know, people that can kind of help you, hold you accountable, or connect you to uh, good, useful sources of information. How do you uh, how do you self assess? How do you know that that what you're learning is what what you ought to be learning? Yeah, I mean, I think this is the the number one question that people are most concerned about when they talk about open learning is this, this idea of assessment. And I think that for self learning, you really have to you know you have to define the goal without knowing quite yet what that's going to be like or feel like. But uh, what you really need to do is rely on a community. You know, um, if you say I'm going to go out and uh, ride a hundred mile bike uh, tour, uh, the test of that in the end is whether or not you are managed to complete the tour, right? So uh, when it comes to something like I'm going to be, you know, more effective in communicating the, uh, the need for uh, a, uh, a water treatment facility in my community, then the test of that is going to be uh, do people, uh, you know, agree with you and have you managed to convince people? So you've got to build in some kind of self-assessment and usually that's going to involve other people's opinions, other people's perceptions of how you're achieving it. How do you, how do you see the, the future of this? I mean, obviously this is kind of the leading edge. You're kind of a, a pioneer. Where do you see this going, this self-learning business? Well, I think that, you know, we're, really what we're talking about is we're going through a process of recognizing and valorizing and valuing the kinds of learning that people have been doing all this time you know and and you know most learning goes on outside of school most learning goes on for personal uh, personally identified reasons and what we're really talking about is methods of sort of recognizing that um, of enriching the opportunities for people to engage in that and I you know I, I guess the the ultimate outcome is just to have lots of people in powerful positions in their communities that uh, have engaged in this kind of self-learning and they see it as being respected. So obviously part of that is, is jobs, you know, having people that are successfully employed that are self-taught um, would be really helpful, uh, but also just uh, in leadership positions. It would be great to see, say, a local politician who's a self-taught person who's very, very immersed in community issues um, and is proud of saying, you know, that they have taught themselves. So I've been interested in, and, and I've done a, an interview with Shelley Terrell about personal learning networks, which are extraordinarily important. And it sounds like what, what you're talking about here, the, the innovation really is the combination of a personal learning plan with a personal learning network. And that the, although the network is active, it's an, uh, a network that learns together and not just a collection of resources 
you learn right. from. It sounds like you're, you're you're putting a little bit of a a a goal structure and a responsibility structure on the individual, which the the personal learning network helps them uh, hold themselves responsible for. Yeah. Is that accurate. Absolutely, and this is something that I've sort of um, used myself in my career as a journalist and as a writer. You know, I've used uh, Twitter and blogs in the past to uh, post progress reports, progress updates, and to kind of set out goals for myself, even to the level of, you know, I'm going to write a certain number of words today. And people on my Twitter network, it's a very low frequency kind of commitment for them to either cheer me on or just recognize it. And a lot of times just the fact of making a public um, commitment to something is going to increase your uh, accountability to yourself. So I think that this is um, just a very necessary step and procedure for anyone who's going through learning um, that they're going to figure out who can hold them accountable and this is part of uh, this peer learning that people will hold each other accountable within their learning plans. Looks like you're in a, a, a shared work space there, a, a co-working space. Is that is that? Uh... Uh, I'm in. I'm in my office at Fast Company Magazine. Uh -huh. uh, Aha! Yeah. All right. Just uh, just to set the scene for for people who see what's going on in the background. So I wanted to push this a little bit further and ask you about something that's been interesting me. That uh, I I first heard from Charlie Danoff called it paragogy, and I'm calling it pyragogy. Which is what if we could take what you do and and I do with groups of people and helping them become learning communities online and start with the group of people and make our own learning community. I think we still probably need a facilitator, but maybe we could divide that task up. What would it take for a group to self-organize their own learning without uh, a kind of a top-down teacher showing them? I think in the absence of a top-down structure, um, you really need a very strong uh, understanding of the goal and a common understanding of the goal. And, and ideally, the people in that group are going to have a stake in, in the goal they're trying to achieve. Um, so, you know, I think a lot of people have experience with working on teams like that, uh, say at work uh, or, you know, in, again, in community organizing. Um, and, uh, you know, I think the structure involved um, just has to do with people understanding that there's a shared responsibility um, amongst them uh, and asking each other questions and listening, you know, basic communication skills as well, I think are going to be important to that. So in, this, in a sense, it's a, a matter of agreeing on a, a group learning plan at, at the beginning, knowing what you're, what you're willing, you, you are all willing to commit yourself to. Is that right? Any yeah. other tips for for doing that I mean we're, we're really talking about beyond the edge of everybody's experience here to to a certain degree sure I mean I think that all of us have experiences um, in a in a one-on-one -on -one situation it might be easier to under, to think about uh, examples of this where you know you really get involved in an interest a shared interest with someone and um, you're both asking each other questions and challenging each other to kind of come up with things and maybe there's some friendly competition in there. Um, but it's a really natural aspect, I think, of a lot of friendships that I've had in my life where um, you both have things that you're curious about and you argue and communicate and give each other, uh, you know, tips or things to read and think about. And this is sort of a, um, a, a very dynamic, I think, structure for peer-based learning. And it's something actually that is... Uh, it's, it's in a couple of, of different religions, you know, um, in Tibetan Buddhist uh, uh, religion, there is a tradition of sort of very intensive peer debate, which sometimes even looks violent. People jump up and down and sort of bang on the floor. And then uh, in, in Judaism, there's a tradition of hevruta, which means basically peer-based study. So you two people get together on a weekly basis and they study a passage uh, from, you know, the, the liturgy, liturgy or scriptures together. Um, and it's not an idea that one person has the answers and the other person is, is asking questions, but they're both asking each other questions. Well, you point out that the, that there's really a long tradition of both self-learning and, and peer learning. It, it, it brings to mind uh, Ivan Illich in 1971, uh, when the ARPANET was only two years old, wrote about people forming webs and networks. Anya, this has been really helpful and enlightening, and, and thank you very much. Thank you for having me, Howard. It's been fun. Bye. Bye. Thank you for having me, Howard. It's been fun. Bye.